Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages. This is Tim May along with Bill Rabinowitz. We promised we'd be back, and we're back, Bill. What is it? Uh, what, what are your thoughts here immediately as Ohio State prepares to go into Big Ten ball? Like in this day and age, this modern age, every game matters. This one now, at least you're starting to play for an actual championship. Right. And in Ohio State's always their first goal has always been to win the Big Ten championship. Uh, the non-conference part of the schedule is what it is. Obviously, the, the big hurdle was Virginia Tech, and then they they kind of for the next two weeks they kind of sleepwalk through those and then it was better last week i think it was clearly a sign of progress against western michigan certainly not they're not all the way there yet but at least you could say going into the big 10 part of the schedule they're on the right course i guess the progress i saw was uh the offense got back on track to a certain extent 518 yards total offense and in this in this environment, though, that's not quite good enough, <laughs> you know, which is hard to believe. In any environment, it could be not quite good enough. Uh, you win handily 38-12, to 12, uh, yet there are questions, you know, can Cardell throw the deep ball? Well, Cardell Jones can probably throw the ball 100 yards if he wants to. Uh, so it's these little fine points now that are, that are the questions as opposed to a week ago was what is, where is, is it going to be here? What is the offense? If you were going to say, okay, give me one very correctable problem on offense, I think you would say, well, Cardell Jones isn't throwing the ball far enough. I will take that as a problem. I, the, to me, the bigger concern coming out of Saturday's game was the way that Western Michigan ran up the middle against Ohio State, especially early. They, they, they fixed it later on, but they ran some nice counters. So they did some nice scheming things, Western Michigan. Uh, and they were a better team than, than I thought they'd be, honestly. Uh, yeah. Some skilled players. Braverman was really good. That, that receiver 84 was very good. That, that's a pretty good team. Yeah, Corey Davis is going to play on Sundays, and probably Braverman are the two guys you're talking about. Right, right. So, you know, I, I expected a little bit more. But, again, 38-12, if you're quibbling about 38-12, then you're talking about a pretty good team. But Quibble is, well, is our middle name. At least it's your middle name, correct? It is. Quibble Rabinowitz. Bill Quibble Rabinowitz. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at I'm, I'm like you. I mean, I, you know, when you're around a team, you cover that team. Uh, you do see the flaws. You do see the things where they can be better. You know, Cardell Jones, I remember after the game, I asked him, I said, you know, boy, 288 yards, career high. Yet, man, you know, a couple, three of those, a couple, three or four of those deep ones, you know, he connects on those, and you could have had a day. And he goes, yeah, I mean, he knows too. You know, it could have been better. And that's, I think, that's what stands out about this team more than anything else. It's the defending national champion. It's undefeated. It's won a nation uh, best active 17-game win streak, and yet they know they can get better as they head into the Big Ten. Yeah, and, you know, people just assume, and this is what I'm going to be writing about today, well, we've we all written about it to some degree, people just assume that because they won the national championship, they're just going to pick up where they left off. And, well, it's not the same. Even if most of the players are the same, they still have some new coaches, they still have new players, and, and even older players in newer roles. Nick Vanette, for example, uh, Tim Hinton, the tight ends coach today, said, He's not playing up to the level we know he can play because he's in a different role now. Last year he was a part-time guy playing along with Jeff Hireman. Now it's his job. And it, he's struggling some to, to live up to that expectation. And, and that goes for a lot of different guys. I, I think that Cardell played better last week because I think when, when Urban Meyer said he's the guy, you know, at least for now, I think that did lift a little bit of a weight off, off his shoulder. He played a little bit more free and easy, I thought, a little more confidence. I, I don't know about the looking over your shoulder aspect of things, but I think that he just looked like, okay, I'm the Ohio State quarterback, and he played with a little more command. Well, go back and watch one of our earlier podcasts or maybe read one of our Inside the Beats. You know, you forget where you, where you said or wrote things, but – you know, you keep reminding people college football teams are different from one year to the next. You can lose three guys, and it can change the whole dynamic of the team. And uh, as I've talked about this quite a bit, Jeff Hireman was a tremendous blocker. Forget about catching the ball. I mean, Nick Vanette had more catches than he did last year. But Jeff Hireman set the edge, man. I mean, he was – and they, they have missed that aspect. But the point is, for the coaches and even the players, each year you tailor things – on the guys you have, not the guys who are now in the NFL or, in Jeff's case, uh, too bad he's rehabbing, right. but uh, a knee injury. But you tailor it to what you have, just like you look around this offense right now. They don't have Evan Spencer. He's one of the greatest blockers you ever saw at wide receiver and just a do-everything uh, cleanup guy. Uh, so they've – Jalen Marshall's not wide receiver. He was at hybrid back at the end of the year last year. He's coming into his own slowly but surely as a deep threat along with everything else. I mean – you know, it's one of those things where 
they hit two or three of those plays on Saturday, just like I said a week ago, they hit three or four of those things, and you're not talking about the offense anymore. You're talking about, wow, where can this go? And the obvious guy that we didn't mention was Devin Smith, and he was that deep guy. You could just throw it up Devin Smith and feel confident that it was a one-on-one -on -one situation. First of all, he either beat the guy deep because he was that fast, or he was such he had such good body control and would fight for the ball so well, he'd just make that catch. Now, would he have made some of the catches that Cardell underthrew on Saturday? That's debatable. But I think, again, that's another example of, okay, it is a different team. Even if you have the nucleus back, it is a different team. You have to f allow time for guys to find comfort in their roles and establish their roles. And, and has it taken a little bit longer than people would expect? Yeah, but again, Ohio State played at such a high level at the end of last year that it's just so difficult to, to pick up after nine months and do it again. You know, and everybody's making a big deal about Ohio State giving up some uh, runs up the middle last week. By in the, up the middle, I mean between the tackles. And uh, I keep reminding folks that the other team practices too. You know, they have some players. Uh, that was a really good scheme they, they had going. And for the most part, Ohio State got a handle on it as the game went on, but still got, got gashed a couple of times. They didn't give up a long run for a touchdown. Uh, now uh, they're going and they only gave up 12 points total, and one was on a 55-yard pass play where two guys had a shot at tackling him, Daniel Braverman, and didn't get it done. That's another thing. As, as Tyvis Powell said, he was going to go back and probably watch that 20 times or more. On his uh, on his video uh, later that evening uh, on that deep ball, but uh, what I'm getting to here is Kevin Wilson is one of the great offensive minds in college football. He's a head coach at Indiana. Everybody remembers last year they came in here with a with a quarterback who's really claimed to fame was his dad was a soap opera star, you know, or maybe his mom. Yeah, his mom was too. That's about all you knew about him, and. Uh, Lo and behold, Indiana had to lead 20 to 14, middle of the third quarter, before Jalen Marshall uh, had had a day of days with a uh, a grand slam of four touchdowns. One starting on a punt return, where we were just talking with him, where he said, you know, it was that moment in the season, that moment in the game, where somebody had to step up and make a play. The special teams did that. He went on to score three more touchdowns after that, and they won that game handily, 42 to 21. 42 to, yeah, 42 to 21. But uh, whatever it was, 42 to 28. I've, but I digress. My point is, we got one. my point is, Kevin Wilson's going to have some things. They're going to have some success on occasion, maybe all day offensively. It's yet to be seen. Nate Sudfeld was their starting quarterback last year before he got hurt, injured a shoulder. He's back now. I think they feel pretty confident about their offense. You got to expect them to have some stuff. Yeah, Indiana's 4 0 for the first time since 1990, I believe. Yeah. Uh, now, they haven't really beaten anybody. Probably their, I don't even know who their best win is. Vanderbilt, Western, oh, Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers. Pretty good. Sudden, you know, yeah. everything's, everything's relative. Need Wake, Wake Forest last week. The question with Indiana is it usually is, is can they play enough defense to, to, to give them a chance? I mean, you know, this is not going to be a 24-20 a game. I mean, this is going to be a game where for, if Indiana's going to win, it's going to be in a shootout. Um, I don't even know what the spread is. I mean, Ohio State's going to be a prohibitive favorite. I think it's 17. It yeah. started in 19. Yeah, it's a, Ohio State is a prohibitive favorite for obvious reasons. They haven't beaten Ohio State in 1988. Is that right? Yeah. So 17-game win streak. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Ohio State – certainly should win this game, but you do have to respect that Indiana offense. And if you have an offense that can score, it gives you a puncher's chance. Uh, correct. And, you know, like Urban Meyer talked about this week when the week started, he was asked about that 2012 game when Ohio State had a pretty comfortable lead over there. Didn't have a defense, as they found out uh, as the game went on. And basically relaxed. He saw guys not playing hard on defense, and Joshua Perry told us later, yeah, they, they replayed many plays in the second half of that game where guys just weren't doing their job and were relaxed, and uh, that was a turning point in this program because, in essence, the foot went down. It, uh, I was thinking about an Animal House joke there. There's some, someone to put their foot down, and that foot is me. Well, that was Urban Meyer and Mick, Mickey, Marriott, Mickey Marotti. And uh, basically, you don't play hard, you don't play. And uh, that was a turning point, I think, for this program. I don't know if you agree, Bill. I mean, you did a story on a 2012, a book on a 2012 team, one of your many books you've written about Ohio State football recently. But uh, I digress on that. Uh, uh, it, it, that, that in itself was a turning point for this program. They got back, and I remember talking to Luke Fickle that night, and he looked like they had lost. Yeah. And they went back to the meeting room the next day, and it was a very long, tough day. Because Urban Meyer basically, I don't know, I wasn't there, I don't know if he lost his temper, but he made it very clear this will not happen again under my watch. This will never happen. This will not stand. Is that what not stand. That's exactly what, what he said. Um, you know, so... 
again, some of that you have to give credit to Indiana for, and some of that was special teams. They recovered an onside kick, and I mean, right. it, it was a fluky game. It was a very strange game. They almost got another onside kick. Right. I mean, right. That's what people forget, man. Right. Right. Uh, this winning streak, a regular season win streak in the Big Ten, would have ended, ended abruptly. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think Ohio State does respect Indiana. Most Ohio State fans don't because all they've known against Indiana is, is success. But I think Urban Meyer, first of all, I know that he has a tremendous amount of respect for Kevin Wilson and the offense that he runs. Yeah. And they know how close that, that these games have been closer than they should have been you know, based on the on the spread and based on what expectations are. So I think this is, in some ways, a very good opener for Ohio State. They're going to go in. You know, Do I think Indiana is a legitimate 4-0 that's a, you know, that good? No, but we'll find out. Yeah, think about it. Ohio State, think about what's on the line. Ohio State's won 24 straight Big Ten regular season games. Remarkable. They've won 17 straight games, the longest current win streak in, in the nation. Uh, they've got a 17-game win streak over Indiana. You know, talk about streaking into it. You know, and uh, but then on top of that, you still got to go play. You know, you got to take care of business because each each year is a different challenge. And uh, so we'll be back next week as soon as we clear air traffic control here. We'll be back next week uh, to tell you about what happened in the Indiana game, looking forward to the next game, and, uh, you know, as this Big Ten season gets underway. That's right. So you want to sign off? Well, I mean, uh, I thought you'd have something else to say I there, Bill. Else to say. Yeah. Well, he was too, uh, he was too flustered by the uh, near miss there with the helicopter. But until next week, this is Tim May. And Bill Rabinowitz, thanks for watching.